Hello everyone and welcome back to our quiz game show series. In the last episode we started work on our UI. Now it's all blocked out but it's kind of static. So let's make it so it will now display a question correctly. Let's jump in. So here is our block out for our UI. And at the moment it's all completely static. We need this to change the content based upon what question is selected. So we're going to go to our question screen. Widget, and in the graph of this we need a variable to know what question we're answering. So we're going to have question as a variable. And that's going to refer to the data asset for the question. And we'll make that editable and exposed on spawn for now. Make our life a bit easier. And I can get that question out. And we're going to do this on pre-construct so we can preview what it's going to look like a lot easier. So in here I want to get the question. And the question needs to feed into the question widget. So click on the question widget and make it variable. And we want to go and edit the question widget to make it so that that text block can be edited outside of this widget here. We do that in the graph. Once again, on the pre construct, we want to make a function probably to handle this. Uh, we'll do uh, set question. And in there, we're going to have, actually what we could do, we could just say, here is a data asset for the question. That makes life a bit easier, wouldn't it? Data asset for the question. And we're going to drag that out, get the question itself. And set that to our text here. File, save. Go back to our question screen, go to the graph, and rather than doing this, I can just get rid of the value there. And with the question widget, I can just do the set question function that I've made. Like so. I only want that if the question is valid. So let's right click on that and make that a valid get. So if I go to my design of you and I set the question to history one, which event marked the start of World War One? What which ancient civilization built the pyramids of Giza? Yep. So that's gonna work just fine. Next we need to populate the answers from here. So as I mentioned in the last episode, you want to make sure that the answers are in the correct order here. So A is the first one in the list, B second, third, and fourth. Okay, very important that they're in the correct order here. Um, and to make your life a little bit easier, I recommend renaming the slots here to account for what letter they are. So this is answer A. It's answer B. Answer C. And answer B. Rename that one. That's a bit. There we go. Okay, so it makes it a bit easier for you to identify which is which. So we go back to our graph. Now in the graph here, I need to put those into an array. So, oh, I didn't make them editable. Let's make these all editable. Or variable rather. And there they are now in a list. Now I want these to be in an array. So we're gonna drag out answer A. And we're gonna do make array. And we're gonna add the pins for that. And just put them all in the correct order. So A, B, C, D. And just promote that to a variable. And do answer array. Like that. Now, once we've got the answer array, we now need to set the various answers from the question data. Next, now we need to make a function on the answer widget to actually set the answer, uh, possible answer. So let's go to the function on the w answer. Do set answer option. And in there, we need to know the question. So input da question. And we also need to know the integer. It's been given. Okay. Now the question 
has the answers that it could possibly be. So get, uh, what is it called? Option, what do I call it? Multiple, multiple choice, there you go. Get multiple choice. And from there, get a copy of that index. And now just set the text up within here. So text, answer, set text to that value Ooh, there. Now we've got that function set up. I'm going to go back to our question screen and do a for each loop on our array. From the array element, we're going to do set answer option. Question, it can be our question data asset. And the index is come from the array index here. And that's it. So now if I go to the design view, you can see here which ancient civilization built the pyramids. It's going to now say the possible answers that it could possibly be. Change to the other one. It'll change there too. Now, as you can see, we are overlapping and getting cut off. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually change the font size to account for this and also make it so it wraps the text too. Let's go to the answers. And we're going to go to the answer A and answer B, like the two answer text fields. Go to the fonts, change the size of this down to maybe 24. And with the second bit, we want to make sure we set to auto wrap. Um, that, and we want to make sure also hitting the fill option, making sure it pushes it to the far right at least before it does the wrapping. So if we go back to the question screen, make sure it looks okay when you go to two lines. Yep, we're happy with that. Excellent. Okay, so that's all well and good. However, as I said, we want to give the option to randomize what is the correct answer and randomize the multiple choices around so they're not the same every single time. So at the moment, they don't do that. Every time I select it, it's going to be the same order every single time. So let's randomize it. So I'm going to go to the question screen and here are the answers. Now we're not randomizing this part. The part we want to randomize is actually the answers that are being set from the question. I'm going to drag out the question, get the multiple choices, and I'm going to shuffle that array. But the problem we have here is that we're reading from a read only source and shuffling that array. The next time I read from it, it's not actually going to be shuffled. So what I need it to do is I need to store it as a variable in here, the question screen, and shuffle it there instead. So I'm going to take the multiple choice here, promote to variable, and put it in there like that. And I'm going to shuffle that array there. So this is right, we can write this one. So therefore the multiple choice there is going to shuffle up. So in the for each loop, when it goes through set answer option, we want it to use this selection of multiple choice, not the one inside of the data asset here. So what I'm going to do here is actually rather than sending the question across, let's actually send the actual option across. So we're going to take the get out of here, drag that across, and I can delete the question index. We don't really need to know these ones now. We can just go in there and do uh, choice text. We'll call it. File, save that. Go back to our question screen. We can remove those elements there. And the choice text now, we can go to multiple choice, drag that out, get, copy of the array index and put it into there. So now every time I select a question, it should randomize the answer around. So for example, the signing of Treaty of Versailles is in A. If I set that one again, I'll go back to that one. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand has changed there too. Okay. Um, to notice one thing I want to fix here is you see how this is two lines here because of the, we've got two line answer. When I go to a one line answer, it changes the size of it, kind of distracting. All we can do there is change the grid panel here to fill and stretch out. And it should remain the same now. Both. As you notice, the answers get shuffled around all the time. There's one problem with that. 
is that when you shuffle it around, you're going to lose what is the correct answer easily. Because this bit shuffled, but the correct answer is actually stored in the question. But how the hell do you know what the correct answer is? We've got a few ways you can do that. One is you can get a randomized stream and work that out from there. But the easiest way to do this is before you get a shuffle to start, take the question, get the correct answer, index, multiple choice this and do um, get copy and get a copy of the correct answer and store that there here like so. Um, correct. Ooh, correct answer. So as it shuffles it around, it, it will still know because it's hard coded what the correct answer is actually going to be. So it gets shuffled around. And then on completed, to make your life a little bit easier, you may want to know which of the uh, answers is actually the correct one. What we're going to do is we're going to find the answer, which one is actually holding the correct answer here. So. Um, actually, no, that'd be fine. We'll leave it like that. Look, correct answer there. Yeah, that'd be fine. If we're going to go to the correct answer, that'd be fine. So what will happen at the end is the player will pick a answer and then that will come through on here, the question screen, which will then check it against this correct answer here. If it matches it, great, they win. If that doesn't match, eh -eh, they lose. Okay, so we're not now referencing a single correct answer. Uh, we're now referencing the direct text for it here. Okay, and there we go. So now we've got this easy to read, easy to use quiz system. We can change the question to very easily and randomize at the output just as well. Okay. So that is the question being created, randomized and added to the screen. So now we're going to work on the actual gameplay loop of this and actually be able to select the correct answer. So you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find many of my episodes early from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all our patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.